lecture we learn genes control how cells work by making proteins the proteins have a specific functions and act as the messengers for the cell each gene must have the correct instructions for making its proteins this allows the protein to perform the correct function for the cell but what if things go wrong what if uh, there is a mistake in making a proteins happens. This is what we're going to discuss during today's lecture, and the name of the lecture is mutations. If a mutation occurs in a body cell other than a sperm or an egg cell, the changes are passed on to all the cells that come from it as a result of mitosis. These are called a somatic mutation. These changes are not passed on to the offspring of the organism. Mutations can also occur in the genetic material of the reproductive cells, sperm and eggs. These are known as germ cell mutation. This type of mutation can be passed to the zygote and show up in the offspring. Mutations are caused by mutagens. Mutagen are substances or conditions that cause an error in replication of genetic material. Some chemicals are mutagens. Radiation also is a mutagen. Uh, sometimes viruses can call mutations. In some cases, even increase in temperature can produce mutation. And sometimes mutations happen because mistakes happen. No, no one is perfect and nothing is perfect. Mutations are usually classified into two categories chromosomal mutations and gene mutations. If the structure of a chromosome or, or the number of chromosomes is changed, it is called chromosomal mutation. Chromosomal mutations can cause changes in the cell and the whole organism. Gene mutations occur in individual genes and involve changes in the DNA code. If the order of bases in DNA strand is changed, the gene with the change may now code for a different protein. The effects produced as a result of a gene mutation may be profound. Hugo de Vries in 1903 was the first scientist to refer to abrupt changes in genetic material as mutations. He called these new forms mutants. Thomas Hunt Morgan provided evidence of mutations with his famous experiments that examine inheritance in fruit flies in the early 19, 1900s. During the 1920s, Herman Müller studied uh, mutations in greater depth and provided data that showed that mutations could be caused by X-rays. As we established, mutations are usually classified into two categories, chromosomal mutations and gene mutations. First, we will examine gene mutations. If the mutation involves only one base in nucleotide, it is called point mutation. Point mutations can include addition of a new base, deletion of a base, or substitution of one base for another. Let's answer the question, which of these mutations will be the most dramatic or even dangerous ones? Would it be addition? Would it be deletion? Or would it be substitution? What do you think? As you remember, nucleotides are like letters in the genetic language. Just as we use letters to make words with meanings, the order of the nucleotides on DNA strand codes information. They make words that 
tell the cell how to make each protein. So let's take a look at the simple sentence, such as I want to go home. Now what I did, I made a mistake. I substitute a W letter with letter V in this sentence. So can we read still the letter as a sentence and understand it? I want to go home. You sort of, there is a mistake, but you sort of still get it. You understand what this sentence is trying to say. Now, that's what, uh, if this happens in the nucleotide sequences, we call this missense mutation. Well, there is, it's the sentence still make the sense, but not necessarily the right one. Now, let's take a look at another case of scenario. What I did now, I deleted the dub, letter W. So what happened, everything is chef shifted to the left. And the sentence is, I at ok ohum. We could hardly understand or if understand at all. Uh, there is no real sense in the sentence, right? So uh, the frame shift occurred in this sentence. So this kind of uh, mistake is much more serious than ones that we looked at before, at substitution. Let's take a look at addition. Here I added letter Y. And the whole sentence shifted to the right. So the sentence we ending up with Iman at Og Om. And doesn't make any sense. Again, this is a very serious mistake occurs if it especially happens on nucleotides in the gene. So will be the right protein produced if this happens on the nucleotides? No. Therefore, the most serious mutations are deletions and additions. The most common mutation is a base substitution in which a single base in DNA is replaced with a different one. And this is what you see here. You see, we have a wild type, is a strain of genetic code, right? ACA, which is actually coding for uh, threonine. Threonine, abbreviation for threonine is T, small h, and small r. And as a substitution happened here, instead of C, we, the G was, uh, uh, was uh, inserted in the codon. And we ending up with codon AGA, which codes for different amino acid, arginine. The substitution happened, and we ending up with the insertion of a different amino acid. We call this mutation, right? Uh, point mutation happen here. Such a substitution is likely to result in incorporation of incorrect amino acid in synthesized protein. And its results, and this results is known as missense mutation. Missense mutations are non-synonymous mutations that arise from point mutations. Mutations in a single nucleotide that result in substitution of different amino acids, resulting in changing of the protein encoded. If it happens early in the sequence and the codon is changed to translate into a stop signal, then the protein will not be made and it could cause serious uh, consequences. You see here, we have a wild type, right? UAC, but here substitution happened and we ending up with UAA. And UAA is a chain terminator, or in other words, stop coding. So uh, then the protein is not produced at all. And uh, that's, this is what we call nonsense mutation. What we learned so far is that the, during substitution, order of the basis is changed, genetic code is altered, insertion of an incorrect amino acid or chain terminator at the particular location occurs. 
Now, here is something interesting that can happen. Let's take a look. Here we have a wild type, right here on top, strand, right? This is a, a codon, a codons we have, the genetic code is here. Let's take a look at the codon here, ACA. As you already know, this encodes for uh, uh, threonine, the amino acid called threonine. Now, what happens here, mutation occurred, and A been substituted on G. But ACG also codes for threonine. So even mutation happened, the amino acid still be the same, the same amino acid inserted in here. We call this type of mutations as silent mutations or uh, sy synonymous mutations also. Before we looked at, looked at non-synonymous mutation, this is a synonymous mutation from the word syn uh, uh, synonym, right? Synonym, synonymous mutation or simply silent mutation if you wish. Synonymous mutations are actually fairly common, but since they have no effect, then they are not noticed. Here is an example with another amino acid, glycine. GGDG is co coded uh, for glycine. But if mistakes happen, substitution occurs, and instead of GC or A or U are inserted, we still ending up with glycine. You see, because of this, the rates of mutations are actually slows down here, right? So perhaps there is a meaning here, evolutionary meaning we have, right? Reducing the amount of mutations in the certain species, even though mutations are very important in evolutionary terms, like non-synonymous mutations are very important for species to change. Species change within the time because of the non-synonymous mutations. Synonymous mutations, though, as you could see here, do not play perhaps such an important role in change of an organism. Non-synonymous mutations have a, a much greater effect on an individual than a synonymous mutations. In a non-synonymous mutation, there is uh, usually uh, an addition or deletion of a single nucleotide in the sequence during transcription occurs when the messenger RNA is copying the DNA. This single missing or added nucleotide causes a frame shift mutations, which throws off the entire reading frame of the amino acid sequence and miss up the codon. This actually does affect the amino acids that are coded for and change the resulting protein that is expressed. The severity of this kind of mutations depends on how early in the amino acid sequence it happens. If it happens near the beginning and the entire protein is changed, this could become a lethal mutation. And this is what you see on this slide, a type of point mutation called deletion. You see the um, cytosine being deleted here, right, C is deleted, and what happens, the whole thing's shifted to the left, and we ending up with totally different amino acid, where serine supposed to be is histidine is now, where phenylalanine is now, uh, leucine is inserted, or when a, a threonine, we have histidine inserted, and so on. It is understandable that frame shift mutations can change an entire trait or, or in an organism. And here you see addition, another type of a point mutation, the um, uracil being inserted instead of which one? C stands for cytosine, right? So U instead of cytosine. And again, frame shift mutation occurs. So 
So what happened? Everything now is shifted to the right. We have different amino acids. Compare the amino acid that is on a wild type right here, right? And the amino acids that are here now and the mutant. So it is another type of a, a frame shift mutation. Now, insertions and deletions are additions or losses of nucleotide pairs in a gene. These mutations have disastrous effect on the resulting protein more often than sub substitutions do. Now, in uh, frame shift mutations, the three base uh, sequence, or we call it codon, is altered, and each codon following the sequence is altered as well. So far, we are looking at the gene mutation, to be specific point mutations. Gene mutation is a change in genetic material. Such change in genotype may be disastrous, lethal, or beneficial. So let's take a look at different cases of scenario, at uh, different um, uh, mutations occurring in humans. Some of you perhaps heard of such disorder as cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is caused by a point mutation change in one nucleotide. Cystic fibrosis mutations affect the body's ability to make or direct the protein, which helps salts and water move into and out of cells. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder that causes severe damage to the lungs, digestive system, and other organs of the body. Cystic fibrosis or, uh, affects the cells that produce mucus, sweat, and digestive juices. These secreted fluids are normally thin and slippery. But in people with cystic fibrosis, a defective gene causes the secretions to become sticky and thick. Instead of acting as a lubricant, the secretions plugged up tubes, ducts, and passageways, especially in the lungs and pancreas. Although cystic fibrosis is progressive and requires daily care, people with cystic fibrosis are able to attend schools and work. They often have better quality of life than people with cystic fibrosis had in previous decades. Improvements in screening and treatments may, uh, mean that people with cystic fibrosis may live into their mid to late 30s or 40s or some are living into their 50s. Sickle cell anemia is a blood disease in which red blood cells reveal an abnormal crescent or sickle shape when observed under conventional microscope. It is an inherited disorder, the first ever to be attributed to a mutation in 1949 by Linus Pauling. This cause of a sickle cell anemia was attributed unequivocally to a single base substitution in DNA sequence of the gene encoding hemoglobin molecule, the protein that carries oxygen in red blood cells. People with sickle cell trait are less likely to succumb to malaria caused by eukaryotic parasite called plasmodium. Many African infants with normal red blood cells die of cerebral malaria but those with sickle cell trait have greater resistance. The deformed red blood cells are sequestered and phagocytized by immune system cells. Thus, the parasite is destroyed along with the sickle cells. Also, the, also, this does not provide complete protection from malaria. It does lessen the severity of disease, and infants survive and eventually pass on their mutant genes to another generation. However, sickle cell trait does not offer any benefits to a person not living where malaria is not a threat. Interestingly, women with sickle cell trait appear to be more fertile than normal women. The reason for this is unknown. Another condition that caused by point mutation is albinism, a group of inherited disorder where there is a little or no production of pigment melanin. Several genes provide instructions for making one of the several proteins involved in the production of melanin. Melanin is produced by cells called melanocytes, which are found in skin, hair, and eyes. 
Melanin also plays a role in the development of optic nerve. So people with albinism have vision problems. Albinism is caused by mutations in one of the genes. Different types of albinism can occur based mainly on which gene mutation causes the disorder. The mutation may result in no melanin at all or significantly reduced amount of melanin. People with albinism are also sensitive to the effects of the sun, so uh, they are at uh, increased risk of developing skin cancer. Also, there is no cure for albinism. People with disorder can take steps to protect their skin and eyes and uh, maximize their vision. So far, we were talking about mutations that are not beneficial. Well, the ones that are uh, uh, with um, sickle cell anemia is beneficial, but only in the places where there is a prevalence of um, malaria infection. Let's take a look at beneficial infections now. 1% of North Europeans are known to carry a mutation in a gene called CCR5 that renders a cellular receptor defective and confirms uh, kind of total immunity for HIV infection. In other words, 1% of North Europeans do not have a co-receptor for HIV. A co-receptor or receptor is like a knob that HIV uses to enter the cell. No co-receptor, no entry into the cell. So the mutation we are talking about is beneficial one that provides HIV resistance. On the left of this slide, you can see the model of this uh, core receptor in the cell. Now I want to introduce another example of uh, beneficial mutations that occur in, occurred in bacteria. As you know, since 1940, we've been using antibiotics to fight bacterial infections. Antibiotics work by blocking vital processes in bacteria, killing the bacteria, or stopping, stopping them from multiplying. This helps the body's natural immune system to fight the bacterial infection. Different antibiotics work against different types of bacteria. Antibiotics have been effectively used to fight different bacterial infections, but something happened. All of a sudden, some antibiotics stop working, stop killing harmful bacteria or virulent bacteria, we can refer to it. Let's take a, a look at a particular case with an infection called gonorrhea. Uh, gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted infection caused by bacteria Neisseria gonorrhoea. This infection remains a major public health concern. World Health Organization estimated that in 2020, there are 82.4 million new cases infected among adolescents and adults aged 15 to 49 years worldwide. Most cases were in the African region and Western Pacific region. People get this infection through a sexual uh, intercourse. So when Neisseria gonorrhea starts gets into the body, it ends up in a very uh, uh, hospitable environment where is uh, warm temperatures, plenty of food, and water. So it starts growing in number, multiplying. But then mutation have occurred in bacteria that allow the Neisseria gonorrhea to survive in the presence of antibiotic drugs, leading to the evolution of antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. Mutation had allowed uh, uh, this new strain of bacteria to produce a protein, an enzyme, that breaks down antibiotics. So when antibiotic is introduced into the body, this antibiotic is destroying the uh, bacterial strains that are incapable of producing such enzymes. But those bacteria that produces the enzyme survive. 
eventually this new strain of mutated bacteria were, were capable to pass its information how to build this uh, vital enzyme to other strains of Neisseria gonorrhoea. The antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria Neisseria gonorrhoea survived and multiplied. This surviving bacteria uh, have resistant trait in their DNA now, and it's capable of passing it to other microorganisms around them. So mutations that occurred in Neisseria gonorrhea is a beneficial mutation. It's helped organisms to survive despite the antibiotic being introduced into the environment. I hope you notice that mutations add to variations uh, of traits within the population, which is very important in terms of evolution. In other words, in terms of survival of population in the changing environment. Genetic mutations within the, uh, within the organism have contributed to increased drug resistance in Neisseria gonorrhea. Infection outside of the genital area, namely in the throat and rectum, particularly affect key populations such as men who have sex with men. Why is this so? Think about it. Why? Maybe you remember our lecture on normal microbiota, and there might be an answer. You see such areas as throat and uh, uh, rectum uh, contain a uh, great variety of different type of uh, microorganisms, including bacteria, bacteria, and this may play role in the development of resistant strains of Neisseria gonorrhea because they are capable to, to exchange genetic material with other organisms in these parts of the body. And another question we want to answer is, what causes mutations? Mutations can result from DNA copying mistakes made during cell division. Exposure to ionizing radiation, exposure to chemicals called uh, mut mutagens, or infections by viruses. And mutations can occur spontaneously without any of these reasons. But such mutations are rare. First, we will take a look at mutagens. Mutagen is a substance that causes a mutation. One of the examples is nitrous acid, which converts adenine to a form that no longer pairs with thymine, but instead pairs with cytosine. Nucleoside analog, a molecule structurally similar to a normal nitrogenous bases, but they have slightly altered base pairing properties. It could be randomly incorporated into cellular DNA in place of a normal basis. Some antiviral and anti-tumor drugs are nucleos nucleoside analogs. During this lecture, I introduce you to frame shift mutations. Well, there is such substance as benspiren. It is present in smoke and soot. This then this substance causes frame shift mutations. Very often students ask me, what is soot? Soot is what's left when fossil fuel like wood, coal, and oil haven't completely burned. The English surgeon Parsifal Pat was the first to establish a causal link between cancer and exposure to a substance in the environment. In 1775, he described the occurrence of cancer of the scrotum in the number of his male patients, whose common history included employment as a chimney sweepers when they were young. He related the malignancy to the occupation and concluded that their prolonged exposure to soot was the cause. Pat's description of this disease and his concern for the plight of this chimney boy sparked the series of reports by other authors and brought to light a disgrace, a disgrace which took another hundred years to eliminate in England. 
but may legitimately be seen as a precursor to the modern investigators, investigators who seek to prevent occupational exposure to hazardous substances. Globally, 2.4 million deaths from cancer due to use of tobacco products occur every year. Frame shift mutagens is a major uh, cause of cancer. When spirant, a frame shift mutagen, is present not only in soot, but in any kind of smoke. Cigarette smoking can cause all kinds of cancers, but the most common one is the lung cancer. The most important thing you can do to prevent lung cancer is not to start smoking or to quit if you smoke. Avoid secondhand smoke. Smoke from other people's cigarettes, cigars, pipes is called secondhand smoke. Make your home and car smoke free. Another example of uh, uh, frame shift mutagen is aflatoxin. Aflatoxin produced by Aspergillus flowers, a mold that grows on peanuts and grain. Aflatoxin can cause liver cancer and immune system dysfunction. Linkages with a child standing are suspected but not proven. Also, aflatoxin poisoning is not major concern in the United States due to the surveillance and monitoring in our food system. This issue is still relevant in the states where recalls do occur and millions of dollars of agricultural corpse are lost annually. Aflatoxin regulations and inspections are in place in the United States to prevent aflatoxin contamination into food products. Aflatoxin outbreaks have also occurred in developing countries such as Kenya and the United Republic of Tanzania. These outbreaks have led to the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control developing working groups to tackle aflatoxin contaminated food. Another example of frame shift, shift mutagens is acridine dyes used experimentally against your herpes virus infections. Mutations also can result from radiation. There are two types of radiation, ultraviolet light and X-ray. First, we will take a look at UV light. What it does, it causes covalent bonding between adjacent timing bases. It forms timing dimers, which distorts DNA molecule. So it affects the areas in DNA molecule that uh, has two timings next to each other. So here you can see two timing, timings next to each other attached to the sugar phosphate group of DNA molecule. Now, Look, UV light now is hitting the timing, uh, both of those timings. As a result, there is a covalent bonds are formed. And here is the structure we called uh, timing dimer forms. But this timing dimer, uh, dimer also causes the kink in the DNA molecule like here. So the shape itself of DNA molecule is changed now. Obviously, this can cause to all kinds of mistakes when protein synthesis uh, occurs. Now, let's take a look at X-ray. Now, X-rays, they can cause break and alteration in DNA molecule. Breaks that occur on both strands are often lethal. And here you could see the chromosomes, you see breakage in chromosomes, here, here, and there. In addition to the chemicals and radiation, another source of mutation is viruses. Viruses are very small organisms that can infect the cell of other animals and plants. Humans are, humans are susceptible to a large number of different viruses. Viruses can disrupt cell behavior in several different ways. They can directly cause mutation by inserting their genomes into the DNA of the host cell. The integration can disrupt important regulatory genes. 
the viruses may contain their own genes that disrupt the regulatory, the regulation of the cell. The, this process may be beneficial to the virus, but it is detrimental to the host. Some viruses actually carry altered versions of genes that they pick up from previous host cells. These altered genes no longer function properly, and when they insert it into a new host cell, they cause dysregulation and can lead to cancerous growth. And viruses can prevent cells from committing suicide. Yes, our cells commit suicide when they become old. This process is known as apoptosis. Because an old cell can make mistakes and have chance to become malignant or cancerous soul cells, these cells commit suicide. Cancerous cells are also known as immortal cells, since they do not die, uh, but reproduce endlessly, endlessly, as long as they have food. The viruses known to cause human cancers are Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, Hepatitis B virus, Hepatitis C virus, human herpes virus 8, human papilloma virus, abbreviation HPV. Keep in mind that even if you are infected with a virus that links to cancer, it doesn't mean you will get the disease for sure. And there are things you can do from vac vaccines to lifestyle to prevent yourself from catching the virus in the first place. Epstein-Barr virus is a common virus. Most people get infected with it at some point in their lives. Most of the time, people with Epstein-Barr virus stay healthy and don't have symptoms. For others, Epstein-Barr virus can cause uh, mononucleosis and other more serious conditions, from viral meningitis to pneumonia. Several cancers are linked with Epstein-Barr virus. But the most common one is a Barkitt's lymphoma. Doctors treat hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus infections with medication. You can often get rid of hepatitis C virus after a few months of treatment. Medication doesn't cure hepatitis B virus, but it can lower the chance of liver damage and liver cancer. There is a vaccine to prevent hepatitis B virus, but not hepatitis C virus. Those with higher chances of getting hepatitis B virus should get vaccinated. That includes people who have multiple sex partners, who have HIV infection, who inject illicit drugs, and the health care workers. Human herpes virus 8 uh, can cause Carposi sarcoma, a cancer of the blood vessels, as well as two types of lymphoma. You are more likely to get the cancer from uh, human herpes virus 8 if you have weakened immune system because you had an organ transplant, get chemotherapy, or have AIDS. The virus can be spread during sex, so you can avoid catching it if you use condoms and limit how many sexual partners you have. It may also be spread through blood and saliva. HPV is a group of more than 200 viruses, and at least a dozen of them can cause cancer. HPV can spread during vaginal, anal, or oral sex. HPV often goes away on its own and doesn't cause any health problem. Some people stay infected though. If they have HPV that causes cancer, it can lead to cancers of the cervix, vulva, vagina, penis, anus, tonsils, or tongue. HPV vaccines can keep you from getting infected with the virus. Health officials recommend them for everyone through age 26 if they have not been vaccinated previously. There is a vaccine approved by FDA for age 27 and 40 to 45, but you should discuss with your doctor if these vaccines are appropriate for you. Spontaneous mutations occur in natural environment. They occur infrequently and randomly. Rate of mutation is generally between 1 in 10,000 and 1 in a trillion. Low rate of spontaneous mutation is due to the cellular repair mechanisms. Several different complex DNA repair systems are present in the cell of every organism. 
Some systems are specific to the kind of DNA damage caused by UV radiation, and other systems are more general. This is how they work. A complex of enzymes rolls up and down the DNA, checking it out as it were. The enzymes are very sensitive to any alterations in the double helix. If any bases are incorrectly paired, say guanine paired with a thymine, or linked together improperly, or have been altered to some form other than the standard for bases, the repair enzyme complex goes to work. A chunk of perhaps a couple of hundred nucleotides is cut out of the offending chain, leaving the intact partner briefly naked. Then the other enzymes of the repair system cons uh, construct a new lens of DNA, putting an adenine nucle nucleotide opposite every thymine, a cytosine opposite every guanine, a thymine opposite every adenine, and a guanine opposite every cytosine until a, re a proper DNA change is synthesized. The new piece is sutured into the change being repaired by yet another enzyme ligase. In this way, all but the most gross damage to DNA is fixed. Actually, then the term mutation should be used to refer not to any random changes in the DNA molecule, but to the very small proportion of those uh, random changes that cannot be repaired or that are repaired incorrectly. Even DNA repair complexes make mistakes sometimes. Still, experiments with microorganisms and fruit flights indicate that something like 99.9% .9 of all damage to DNA is completely repaired by the repair enzymes. Repair enzymes can even uh, reconstruct chromosomes and other DNA molecules that have completely broken apart. In rare instances, a human is born with an inherited defect in a gene that makes one of the enzymes of the UV radiation repair system. Such uh, persons are abnormally sensitive to sunlight because they cannot repair the damage done to the DNA of their skin cells. The sun causes all sorts of damage and blemishes in exposed areas, and some of this damaged skin may eventually become cancerous. Persons diagnosed with this genetic disease, Zeratorma pigmentosum, must protect themselves by becoming night people and staying indoors all day. Inherited defects in the other DNA repair uh, systems are even more serious. Affected persons may be characteriza characterized by very poor growth due to death, cell death anemia, a high incidence of chromosome breakage in their cells, and a high probability of dying of leukemia or some other form of cancer. On this, we finished with the gene mutations, and now we're going to take a look at the chromosomal mutations. Chromosomal mutations can cause changes in the cell and the whole organism. Mass chromosomal mutations occur during cellular divisions. Sometimes the wrong number of chromosomes end up in the cell due to non-junction. Here you can see the non-disjunction happened here during anaphase, one of the sister chromatids being pulled to the wrong side of the cell, ending up with more chromosomes than it has to have. Trisomy is a condition caused by an extra chromosome in a cell. Trisomy 13, also called Patau syndrome, is a chromosomal condition associated with severe intellectual disability and physical abnormalities in many parts of the body. Individuals with trisomy 13, or 13 often have heart defects, brain or spinal cord abnormalities, very small or poorly developed eyes, extra fingers or toes, an opening in the lip, a cleft lip, uh, with or without an opening in the roof of the mouth, and weak muscle tone. Due to the presence of several life-threatening medical uh, problems, many infants may, uh, with trisomy 13, die within their first days or weeks of life. Only 5% to 10% of children with this condition live past their first year. Down syndrome is also caused by a narrow inner cell division called non-junction. 
Conjunction results in an embryo with three copies of chromosome 21 instead of the usual two prior to or at consumption. A pair of 21 chromosomes in either the sperm or the egg fails to separate. As the embryo develops, the extra chromosome is replicated in every cell of the body. This type of Down syndrome, which accounts for 95% of the cases, is called trisomy 21. People with Down syndromes are short in stature. Many have a variety of physical and mental disorders. Trisomy 21 or Down syndrome occurs most frequently among babies born to women over 35 years old, affecting up to 2% of such births. The age of the father apparently has much smaller effects. We can guess that much prolonged prophase 1 of the human oocyte might have to do something with this. Remember, the oocyte would have been arrested for this stage for 35 years. So far we looked at autosome conditions. Now we're going to look at sex chromosome conditions. But before, let me remind you that females have two X chromosomes, while males have one X and one Y chromosome. A normal female career type is written as 46 comma XX and a normal male career type is written as 46 XY. But chromosomal mutations happens and some females are born with the missing X chromosome. They have only one uh, X chromosome. And their career type is written as 45XO. This is known as a Turner's syndrome. Could male have a Turner's syndrome? No, there is no such a thing because in order to be a male, one has to have what? At least one Y chromosome. People with Klein-Field syndromes are males who have two X chromosomes and one Y chromosome. And their career type is written as 47 comma XXY. People with Jacobs syndromes are males with extra Y chromosome and their career type is written as 47 comma XYY. People with trisomy X are females with extra X chromosome, and their career type is written as 47XXX. In addition, there are many more extreme situations, such as 48XXYY, 48XXXY, 49XXXXYY, 48XXXX, 49XXXXXX, and so on. So what does it mean for the individuals to have all these kind of conditions? Well, people with Turner syndrome are females. They have puffiness or swelling or known as lymphedema of the hands and feet. Short stature. Skin folds around the neck, webbed neck, known as webbed neck. Poor breast development, underdeveloped ovaries, skeletal abnormalities, and risk of cardiovascular and kidney disease. Individuals with Kleinfinger syndrome have poor beard growth, partial breast development, broadening of the hips, underdeveloped testes. All XXY males are sterile, but not impotent. One in 1,000 males are born with two Xs. Now take a look at this career type and uh, find out what is wrong with it. Pause if you have to. 
this career type is 47XYY. You see here we have 1X and 2YY chromosomes. So this is career type of a person with a Jacobs syndrome. The great majority of boys and men uh, with an extra Y chromosomes are never aware of it because they do not have symptoms that lead to the diagnosis. Only a small fraction of boys and men with XY wife are ever diagnosed. Jacob's syndrome is not an inherited condition. It most commonly arises during meiosis II in the father, at which time an extra Y chromosome is attributed to the resulting sperm. The alter alternative and less common form of this condition is 46, comma, I'm sorry, it's 46, comma, XY, 47, comma, XYY mosaicism, which arises during early embryonic development. In this scenario, the postzygotic mitotic non-junction is responsible for the disease. This mutation seems to occur randomly, and it is unknown if any parental causes of this, uh, if there is any parental causes of these mutations. There are usually a few symptoms. People with XYY syndrome or Jacobs syndrome are usually taller than average height. They have severe acne. They have widely spayed eyes, condition called hypertellurism. Very curved pinky finger, as you could see on this diagram. You see, abnormal middle phalanx. And increased risk of learning disabilities. And also they have weaker muscle tone. The person is generally otherwise normal, including typical rates of fertility. Now take a look, look at this career type. Is this career type a male or a female? This is a female career type with trisomy X. Most girls with triple X syndrome go undiagnosed and live normal, healthy lives. Like other sex chromosome trisomes, XXX tends to confer added height. Some developmental delays and skeletal problems may be present. What is the syndrome we are looking at this uh, slide? Pause if you have to. It is X. XYY syndrome. What is career type of this individual? It is 48 comma XXYY. Despite XXYY syndrome initially being considered a variant of Clyde-Findler syndrome, now it is widely regarded as a separate clinical syndrome with psychological, morphological, and neurodevelopmental involvement. And typically, it is similar to Clyde-Findler syndrome, but it has an additional characteristics such as abnormally wild neck, as you could see on this picture, mental retardation, psychiatric disorders, and skeletal deformities. Is this the career type of a male or female? What is the career type of this individual? You are correct if you said 49, XXXXX. Three extra X chromosomes. Remember, in one of our lectures, I taught you how to count in Greek meta, eta, propa, buta, penta. So, what we are looking at here is pentasomy. Pentasomy X is a sex chromosome ab uh, uh, anomaly caused by the presence of three extra chromosomes in females. So what did we learn during today's lecture? 
We learned that mutations can cause all sorts of conditions and diseases, including different forms of cancers. Though there is a beneficial mutation that help organisms to survive in the constantly changing environment. How? By adding variations within the species. Mutations can, cause, can be caused by mutagens, radiations, viruses, and simply because mutations happen. We call such mutations as a spontaneous mutations. So, after all, mutations are not a pretty copy of genetic code. Mm -hmm.